So, in this 57, CERN uh, started a single cyclotron, that's going to show you this over there, and in 59, CERN started a proton synchrotron, which is, also you can see it from here, much bigger, 628 meters long, and uh, is a machine that is still used today. It's still part of the CERN operator complex. So, what is the difference between cyclotron and synchrotron? Uh, so I already told you that we uh, use magnetic fields to keep particles in the circular orbit. Why do you want particles to go in the circular orbit? Because like this, we can accelerate them many, many times. The particles will do millions of turns, every turn they get some energy, and then they kill by energy. Otherwise, if you just accelerate uh, once in a linear accelerator, they, they exist in linear accelerators, but they're limited in the maximum energy they can reach. Another big advantage of synchrotron is that uh, since particles are going always in the same orbit, uh, well, you can build a collider. So you can have uh, particles in opposite directions colliding uh, in, in the center. And that uh, gives you much more available energy than when you have a beam of particles hitting a fixed target. So this kind of uh, collider experiment allowed in 1983 the discovery of the W and Z bosons, which are particles that are uh, demonstrate in a definitive way the fact that the weak and uh, electromagnetic uh, force are unified. So that was it's one of the pillars of the current standard model of particle physics. In summer 1957, the synchro is ready. And CERN's first accelerator comes to life. The purpose of the synchro is to produce and study new particles. Before accelerators were available, such particles could only be observed in cosmic ray experiments. The new machine accelerates protons to 80% the speed of light, producing millions of new particles when those protons collide with a target, giving scientists the opportunity to make systematic measurements. Operation of ESC requires a sequence of actions. Massive pumps extract the air from the vacuum chamber so that protons do not collide with gas molecules during their acceleration. In the proton source, hydrogen gas is ionized and a cloud of protons is injected into the middle of the synchrocytotron. The accelerator makes use of magnetic and electric fields. The magnetic field is produced by a current of 1,800 amps flowing through the coils of the huge magnet. Two D-shaped electrodes with opposite polarity are fixed inside the vacuum chamber in the middle of the magnet. Protons have a positive charge and are drawn towards the negative electrode as they traverse the gap between the electrodes. The magnetic field forces them to follow a circular trajectory and they return to the gap after one half turn. Meanwhile, the radio frequency generator reverses the polarity between the two electrodes. The protons are now attracted to the opposite electron and gain more energy. This process is repeated over and over again. Every time the protons make a half turn, they are whipped around faster and the radius of their path increases. After more than 100,000 turns, they have reached an energy of 600 million electron volts and move at 80% of the speed of light. They are now close to hitting the target, and the first experiment can begin.